They've spent millions and millions of dollars in consultants and working groups, and they're effectively creating another working group, the establishment board, who will decide what's going to happen to RNZ and TVNZ. So it is a complete waste of time, millions and millions of dollars. But there is a problem that they're addressing, right? There are half as many journalists in New Zealand as there were in 2008. What would National do differently to ensure we've got a functioning fourth estate? Well, I'd like to know what the problem is, because uh, of effectively they're wanting to spend uh, effectively $14.2 million more than what they've already spent to es establish the new entity, which we don't even know what that is. And, you know, Petrol is actually costing $3. Inflation is the second in the world. And yet they're sure, this, We're talking about journalism here, though. We're talking about journalism. There Let are me finish my sentence. Very expensive entity where that money could be spent elsewhere. But the overall trend lines for journalism are dire. There are fewer journalists. There are fewer outlets. Circulation numbers are down. Surely National's got some plan that's not just taking a hands-off approach and letting the market sort it out. Well, I think this is the whole problem. They've actually had working groups, uh, they've had consultants, and ultimately what they've actually come with is actually absolutely no answer. Where did that actually lead us to? So where is the answer? I'd like to know. They've spent millions I'd on like that. I'd like to know no, no, answer Yeah, that. no, no. But the thing is that we're not the government, right? So they've, the government has actually spent millions of dollars on consultants to look at the industry. Where is the answer? And their answer is merging a two entity that is actually operating independently and quite well in competition with the private entities and effectively reducing the size into one. Okay, let's say National becomes government next election. Would you leave the merger in place as it is? Well, it depends where it is. I mean, it depends on what's actually happened and if it's actually work established already and if it's actually working fine. Why would you actually fix something that's actually working fine, just like now? I mean, what is the problem that the minister decided that he has this end solution, the answer, when he hasn't actually looked at the problem? What is the problem that he's actually trying to solve? You tweeted around the merger a red star, which typically denotes communism. I'm just wondering what you mean about that. I think it was actually in re um, react reaction to the tweet that was somebody actually said, uh, effectively calling the new entity um, Pravda. So I, it was a bit of a joke. Yeah, sure, but the insinuation there is that the journalists there are going to be mouthpieces of the state. Well, I mean, you know, apparently public journalism is about, you know, public interest. And, you know, when the government is fully funding a media entity, you, you would have to actually sort of say, are they really independent? Probably not. But this model is pretty common around the world. We see similar models in Australia, we see them in Ireland, we see them in England. These aren't exactly communist states. Well, no. In terms of going back to the comment about the different public interests, uh, public media that is operating overseas, if you look at the Irish model, apparently that's actually the model that the minister is actually basing on. I mean, it's going through major financial crisis, and are we? why are we following a model that is actually going through a crisis? The real competition isn't really between newsrooms, it's between newsrooms and tech giants. What would National do to help level that playing field? I think good competition is, is the best option that we have, and make sure that the businesses are sustainable and you know when you actually have uh, for example you had situation uh, with Facebook and Google's uh, in Australia where they were saying well you know um, they're putting news on their platforms without paying for the content and I understand some of it but the thing is that you also need to look at the flip side a lot of the news uh, uh, platforms are getting benefit from people sharing those content on Facebook they're getting let exposure, let me, let me fin but exposure. they're losing all their money. No, 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 exposure. But if they're money, if those platforms are monetizing your news content, then they should pay for it. And right. I've always said that. Right. So exactly what would that look like under national? Well, that's exactly it. It's like, you know, that you revenue... You follow the Australian model? Not necessarily, because I think Australian model had some issues. It's like, you know, boom, you need to, you need to pay money. But, you, but you'd be making Facebook pay for the news content it uses? If I am sharing your news content on my Facebook and I'm giving you publicity, are you giving me commission? No, you're not. The thing is, it's like if people are putting their new, your news to actually promote it and actually you get, you get eyeballs on there, you benefit for it. But if those platforms are using your news content to monetize it, to make money for their company, they should pay for it. Finally, the recent poll for National is some of the first good news the party's had in a long time. If you win next election, what portfolios are you gunning for? I guess I've been focused on media uh, for quite some time, so hopefully I, I, I will be responsible.